In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Friends, welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral this evening for the ordination of these three men who will today become deacons in the life of our Archdiocese, in the life of our local church. To Jumma, William and Maria, welcome indeed on this night. To your families, especially your wives and children, to your family and friends who have gathered with you, and those of you who are part of our local church of Melbourne, welcome. In fact, this is the largest number I've seen in our cathedral for many a month, so it's beautiful that uh, we are able to gather in a reasonable number tonight. The diaconate is a sign of the life of the church in all its many dimensions and orders and a gift of charism to the life of the church, in charity, in the gift of preaching, and in the gift of service to the life of the church. This gift is given by the Lord so that we might, in all the many ways in which the body of Christ is manifest, so it might also do so in the order of the diaconate. And so as the body of Christ called together today in this uh, sacrament of the ordination of the diaconate and in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O oh God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Numbers. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, Muster the tribe of Levi and put it at the disposal of Aaron, the priest. They are to be at his service. They are to undertake the duties that are laid on him and on the entire community before finishing, sorry, before the tent of meeting in their service of the tabernacle. The furnishings for the tents of meeting are to be in their charge, and they are to undertake the duties that are laid on the sons of Israel in their service of the tabernacle. You are to give the Levites to Aaron and his sons as oblates. They are to be given to him by the sons of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless you all. 
the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul is thirsting for you. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to Timothy. Deacons must be respectable men, whose word can be trusted, moderate in the amount of wine they drink, and with no squalid greed for money. They must be conscientious believers in the mystery of the faith. They are to be examined first, and only admitted to serve as deacons if there is nothing against them. Deacons must not have been married more than once and must be men who manage their family and children well. Those of them who carry out their duties well as deacons will earn a high standing for themselves and be rewarded with great assurance in their work for the faith in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for the eternal life. If a man serves me, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. If anyone serves me, my father will honour him. The Gospel of the Lord.
let those to be ordained deacon come forward. Juma Lafranc. William Dow. Present. Mario Chavez. Present. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendations of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Saviour Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. In the popular crusader movie, The Kingdom of Heaven, a dying commander of the Templar Knights comes back from crusading in the Holy Land to find and commission his long lost son as a knight of the Templars. In the ceremony of investiture of his knighthood, the young disciple is called upon to take the oath of the knights. At the end of his promises, a weak and dying father gives his son an almighty slap across the face, drawing blood. And he says to him, and that's so you will remember it. In a typically Semitic way, Jesus presents his own set of direct and forthright propositions concerning discipleship in the gospel chosen for this evening's ordinations. A grain must die the need to hate one's life, service that must follow in the footsteps of Christ all the way to the cross. In setting out these stark propositions, Jesus nonetheless points to the expected outcomes, fruitfulness, eternal life, the honour of our Heavenly Father. The call of discipleship is an onerous one, yet it is also something that offers tremendous rewards. As your local gym instructor might say, no pain, no gain. Brothers, you who are to be ordained deacons of the church today, you already know what it means to make a commitment of life for life. Each of you are a married man 
having committed in faith to a covenant of life and love with your wife. You know the commitment that comes with raising your children in the life of faith. The slap of your oaths lives with you each day as a reminder. Today, you take on a new set of oaths that, as deacons, do not supplant your earlier oaths, but enhance and deepen them. Discipleship in the Lord does not need to be confined to one pathway only. The Lord offers you an integration of your life in his name, not a fragmentation of it. To be a deacon in the church is to associate one's self with the life of Christ in humble service, in dignified proclamation and in prayerful dedication. This is reflected in the promises that you will make in a few moments to exercise humble charity, to preach the gospel, to pray for God's people, to exercise obedience, to conform your life to that of Christ's. These are sobering and life-forming promises. Yet, like all that the Lord calls us to, it comes with blessing and renewal. As I will say to each of you in a few moments, may God who has begun this good work in you bring it to fulfilment. The diaconate is indeed a good work of discipleship that you take on as your own to live out for the sake of God's people. It is with great assurance in undertaking the work of the gospel that you are ordained deacons today. May this work and your oaths find praise and thanksgiving among the faithful in the way in which you live out your diaconate life. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. And so I ask you, do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the Apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the Gospel and the Church's traditions? Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life 
and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you, to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world. I do. I do. do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? I do. I do. With the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfilment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfilment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfilment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the Almighty Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the holy order of the diaconate. Let us kneel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us, St. Peter and St. Paul. Pray for us, St. Andrew. Pray for us, St. John. Pray for us, St. Mary Magdalene. Pray for us, St. Stephen. Pray for us, St. Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us. St. Lawrence, pray for us. St. Vincent, pray for us. St. Perpetua and St. Felicity, pray for us. St. Agnes, pray for us. St. Gregory, pray for us. St. Augustine, pray for us. St. Athanasius, Pray for us, Saint Basil. Pray for us, Saint Ephraim. Pray for us, Saint Martin. Pray for us, Saint Benedict. Pray for us, Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us, Saint Francis Saviour. Pray for us, Saint John Vianney. Pray for us, St. Catherine of Siena. Pray for us, St. Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us, St. Patrick. 
Pray for us, Saint Mary of the Cross. Pray for us, Saint Anthony of the Second. Pray for us, Saint Josephine Magita. Pray for us, Saint Daniel Comboni. Pray for us, Saint Damasus. Pray for us, Saint Rose of Lima. Pray for us, Saint Martin de Porres. Pray for us, all holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us, Lord be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by your incarnation. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these holy men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in, your judge, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the Church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple and as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your church, in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed 70 men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favour on these servants of yours, who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, May they remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever.
Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Peace be with you. Oh, is it? Okay.
so I'm not licking it a little bit more because I've had so much um, alcohol on. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that many ministers be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood, the people he has made his own. But with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to guard her with your, to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother Auxiliary, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, 
and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all those who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the diaconate. In your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfil by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, oh, in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your, your holy angels to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, 
hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Amen. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Brothers. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen.
body and blood of Christ. Amen. The body and blood of Amen. Christ. The body and blood of Christ. body and blood of Christ. Amen. The body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank to God, thank to you, thank to you very much, Your Grace, Archbishop Peter Comensoli, Archbishop of Melbourne, and thank to you, the Dean of Cathedral, Father, very Reverend Father Wander. And thank you, Father Andrew Jeffer, the director for the office of the permanent diaconess, deacons. Thank you, Father Albert Yokraja, the physical vicar for the western region of Melbourne and parish base of St. Andrew in Werribee. Thank you. And thank also to Father Brendan Lane, parish priest of St. Mary in Dan a parish in Dandina. Thank you to Father Michael, parish priest of Holy Family, Devoton Parish in Dandina. Consulbrants, priests, and deacons. Deacon Jim Curtin, Director of Ongoing Formation for Permanent Deacons. Uh, Deacon George uh, Pitch, Chaplain for South Sudanese Community, a Catholic community in Melbourne. Our brother deacons, from the I Diocese of Melbourne, and especially our visitor deacons, Deacon John, uh, from, from the Diocese of Parramatta in Sydney, and Deacon Alfred from I Diocese of Adelaide. Thank you. Our brother Alclides, and Deacon, uh, uh, our brother Alclides, and the Dean of the Catholic Theological College, as well the lecturers, labor, uh, librarians, and staff. Pastors from the Anglican Church and the other Christian uh, denominations. Our master ceremony, uh, Father Trevor. Thank you very much. Readers, and service director of music, organs, and counters, and cathedral staff. Thank you very much. Our beautiful and lovely wives, Miss Maria Sandra Chavez and Miss Mary Nasso, and Elizabeth Majok, children and grandchildren family and members, relatives and friends, our dear guests from Adelaide and Sydney, our dear parishioners of South Sudanese and Spanish-speaking community, 
and the Latino community, especially the Peruvian community for our brothers Deacon Mario Chavez. Our brothers and sisters in faith community who are following us online and everyone who supported us in one way or another until we reach this stage. May Almighty God bless you all and keep you safe and blessed. On behalf of my colleagues, the new ordained deacons, in one heart, I ask you to continue to pray for us and support us to care for our fellow Christian and whole humankind. In Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And might I add my own word of uh, thanks to all those who have been involved in the formation and preparation of our deacons tonight and all those who have assisted in the uh, enabling of this uh, lovely uh, mass and ordination tonight, particularly in these uh, challenging situations where so many extra things have to be thought through and worked out. Uh, you know, as you would have noticed, there's a lot of sanitising going on tonight. <laughs> so thank, thank you to all those who have been able to um, uh, make this such a, a lovely occasion. In a particular way, I wanted just to acknowledge and thank uh, the wives and families of our three deacons tonight. You are part of this vocation as well. And I want to acknowledge that and thank you for that. As you know, and perhaps no one else maybe knows this, but the, de the deacons' wives themselves make something of a declaration to say, yes, I uh, agreed to allowing my husband to uh, step forward into this uh, ministry of diaconate. So you indeed share in this particular um, order of the church by way of your bond to your husband uh, in marriage. And to all of you who are here tonight, uh, it's lovely that we can indeed see uh, people all the way through the cathedral. It's a great look, I can tell you, um, and it's just wonderful that you've been able to be here tonight. Friends, following the uh, final hymn, the, 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 as usual, the, the clergy will process out. Uh, there will be a moment in the sacristy when I get a photo with the three deacons and then we'll be able to come back out for photos with families and so on. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Go forward. Uh, the mass is ended. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. May he who has been who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries, make you imitators of his Son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. This is the time. Go forth. The mass is ended. Thanks be to God.